Need to know where to look when performing Linux forensics? In this video, we will be looking at the system's artifacts from the quick reference guide from Magnet Forensics. Please help me out by hitting the subscribe button before it kills me. We've already started to look at the reference guide in part one of this series. I broke it down into user space, where the artifacts were bound to a specific user account, versus system space, where the artifacts were generated due to system level operations. In this video, we're going to focus on the system space artifacts. Like most operating systems, there are a few programs that can be configured to run when the system is booted or restarted. The first place on the list is the folder slash etsy slash systemd slash system. So let's do an ls dash capital F of slash etsy slash systemd slash system. And here we see a ton of systemd unit files which are created by the system control enable command, as well as unit files added for extending a service. So systemd is a system and service manager for Linux, which provide startup of system services at boot time, or when manually activated by an admin. So here we see that there are service units which contain the word dot service, and then target units which contain the word dot target. The next item on the list is the slash user slash lib slash systemd slash system folder. So let's go ahead and do a ls minus capital F. And here we see systemd unit files, which were distributed with the install packages. And lastly on the list, we have the slash etsy slash init star files and folders, which are for systems which are not running systemd, but the init process instead. So let's go ahead and do a ls dash capital F of slash etsy slash init. And this is where the config files for init are kept. And on cane distro 3, we have lightdm.conf, ubiquity.conf, and whoopsie.conf. So let's just go ahead and take a look at one of the files. I'm just going to do more of etsy slash init slash ubiquity.conf. And as you can see, this is a script that will install Ubuntu from a live CD. And to determine whether your system is running init or systemd, we can look for process number one by doing ps-q space one. So here on Kane, we see that our process number one is systemd. Under slash etsy slash initd is where all the scripts for the init daemons exists. So if we do ls dash capital F of slash etsy slash initd, we see these files here. Let's take a look at some examples of files of interest. Uh, let's take a look at the Bluetooth files. And we can see that this is just a script that starts and stops the Bluetooth interface. Then we can look at SSH file as another example. Similarly, this script does a bunch of privilege checking and configuration checking before running or stopping the SSHD daemon. The next set of artifacts listed on the quick guide is the scheduled tasks. In Linux, an admin or individual user can set up processes to run on a regular basis based on a set schedule or just run it once in the future based on some kind of setting. So the first artifact we're going to take a look at is in Etsy cron. So let's go ahead and do ls dash capital F of slash Etsy slash cron star. On our cane system here, we see the folder Etsy cron tab, which is empty. And then we see the folders etsy cron.d, etsy cron.daily, etsy cron.hourly, cron.monthly, and cron.weekly. And so here, these are the folders where the system-wide cron files are kept. For individual users, their cron files are kept under slash var slash spool slash cron slash cron tabs. So if we do ls dash capital F of var spool cron cron tabs, uh, which interestingly enough requires root privilege to access and I always forget to use sudo so let's do that again with sudo and then ls dash capital F of slash var slash spool slash cron slash cron tabs in this example here we only have one user blue monkey forensics who has set up any cron jobs 
The next artifact listed in the quick guide is the far spool cron at jobs, which is where the AT or at jobs reside. The associate output of the AT jobs will be in var spool cron at spool. And at jobs are things that you want to be executed in the future, but unlike cron jobs, at jobs are only executed once. So if we do an ls dash capital F slash var slash spool slash cron star, once again, these folder require root privileges to access, so we'll have to use sudo. So sudo ls dash capital F var spool cron slash star. And in this case, I do not have any at job set up for this particular system, but we do have a cron tab associated with Blue Monkey Forensics. So let's take a look at that by doing sudo more of slash var slash spool slash cron slash cron tabs slash Blue Monkey Forensics. And you can see the format of the cron tab and at jobs are similar. And the last artifact listed in the schedule task section is the Etsy and the cron tab which contains the jobs that are executed periodically, and it does not assume that the machine is running continuously, unlike regular cron jobs. So if we take a look at more of Etsy slash Anacron tab, in other words, the cron jobs that are set for weekly expect the machine to be up continuously such that every week at a designated time, the job would run. With Anacron, jobs set for week will run when the device is powered back on after that time period. So I would recommend grabbing a varspool anacron, which is a directory used by the anacron to store timestamp files. This next directory contains a ton of great info for incidents response as well as the digital forensics folks. If we do an ls-f of slash var slash log, here we see logs from anyone running as the root account using the sudo command, so that's the off.log. We also see anything from the uh, system boot. So the boot star has all the messages for the system. And from uh, anything that's printed, so that's the cups folder and the lpr.log. Any kernel messages are under current star. Any last logged users in the systems are saved on the last log. Any mail server related activities are on the mail star. Uh, file shares are on the Samba. System logs are on the syslog and much more. So let's take a look at the logs from the system boot. Right, so this is going to be sudo more of var log slash syslog. So you can see everything that happens on the system since the boot is recorded here. So definitely a treasure trove of info. Next one we're going to look at is the var log auth.log. So in this log here, we can see when a particular user used the sudo command. Like in this case, we used it to view a file with more. Let's take a look at the mail logs. That's the var slash log slash mail dot log. And if anything's printed from this machine, we can see it in the LPR dot log. <coughs> the file last log contains the last users logged into the system. So if we do last log, here we see that the user Blue Monkey Forensics last logged into this machine from this IP and at this time. We also see that the user Nina logged in from a different IP at a different time. The file WTMP contains the login records used by the last command. So if we want run last, we can see that the user Blue Monkey Forensics last logged in from this IP at this time and is still on the system. The user Nina, on the other hand, logged in via a different IP and was only on for 2 hours and 12 minutes and no longer on the system. So basically there's tons of useful logs here, so don't forget to look here during your exam. The last section covered here is the system files. So if we take a look at the artifact of a slash etsy star dash release, 
And this basically has files that tell you the distro, the version, and the kernel version that the machine is running. In my environment, I have the lsb-release, which is the Linux standard base release file, which shows that I'm on the Kane 12 distro, which is basically Ubuntu 20.04. And then the os-release file will have a bit more detailed information. The next artifact of slash Etsy slash hostname tells you the network name of the machine that you are on if it's set. So in my environment, I'm on the Kane 12 distro and the default name is Kane. And you may see your machine named localhost if it was never set. The next artifact of slash Etsy slash hosts tells you the mapping of IP addresses to machine names if you choose to do DNS resolve locally. So in my environment, I have some mappings for machines on my local network. You may not have anything on your system. One artifact that's not listed here that I would grab is the slash Etsy slash time zone file, which tells you the time zone setting of the machine. In my environment, my time zone is set to Europe slash Rome. So now I know how to adjust for local time when I do my forensic analysis. The last artifact listed in this section is slash var slash lib slash network manager, which contains configuration files used by the network manager when it tries to get on the network. So I'm going to do sudo ls dash capital F of slash var slash lib slash network manager. So here we see a bunch of different files. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the uh, interfaces. So sudo more slash var lib network manager slash dh client dash enp 0 s 3conf So here we see all of the information that our machine is requesting from the DHCP server every time it tries to obtain an IP. In this case, our system requests for a subnet mask, the broadcast address, time offsets, routers, etc. And to see the last connections of this machine, we can look at the timestamp file in this folder. So we got to do sudo more slash var slash lib slash network manager slash timestamps. And we get a list of various different connections and what well, looks like a Linux timestamp at the very end. And so if you want to just go ahead and convert that timestamp back into a human readable format, we can use the date command to do the conversion by doing date dash D at, and then just copy and paste that timestamp. And here we see it gets converted back to a human readable form. These are just some of the artifacts which you may find useful when examining a Linux system. In this video, we focused on the system space artifacts. For user space artifacts, see this other video. For more videos on the Linux command line, make sure you watch these videos here. To see other videos on the tools on the Kane Forensics distro, watch these videos here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.